It takes community to heal a village. In northern Mali, USC Canada works with local partners to find community-based ways to ensure mother-child health, food security, and jobs. Canadian agencies are helping to renew and strengthen communities throughout the developing world. This means greater opportunities for global villagers. Canadians in partnership, finding solutions that work. Okay, and here we're all set, Bruce, and we're into our seats and ready to go. Our first bowler up is uh, Rose Dowsett. Rose has been bowling for 31 years. She currently bowls in three leagues. She has a current average of 105.6 with a career high single of 162. A career high triple of 384. And she qualified for this tournament with a 305. Rose had a, a 232 in our first uh, for a match way back in what? Week one. She hasn't been on the on the screen for quite a while. That's right. She's had uh, had time to sit and watch all the others qualify and kind of decide what she has to do to stay out in front and get into this skins game. That comes up next week. Yeah, we're coming down to the end of another program. <laughs> Seems like we just did it yesterday. That's right. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Good eight pin drop here, the one and the three pin. <laughs> so we didn't have to wait long for our first mark. Now we're looking at Marilyn Babin. And Marla had a, a 211 her first match. Marla's been bowling for 20 plus years. She currently bowls in one league and has a current average of 107. She has a career high single of 168, career high triple of 402. And she qualified with a 299. She'll probably say six is better than a gutter ball. Because <laughs> that's what she threw at us the very first week she rolled. After six gutter balls, she said, I'll be all right. <laughs> and then she proceeded to throw one. <laughs> I, like, I like the ball she throws. Uh, it's just a nice little easy hook. That uh, good speed on it, it just walks right into the pocket most times. And uh, now she's got herself a good eight pin break with good flat dead wood. And uh, Vanessa was in the uh, Skins game last year, and uh, yeah, she did very well. On the... <laughs> and she started off very well. <laughs> She's not going to let them walk away from her. She's going to make them fight every frame of the way. I spoke to her just before we started. She was pacing around. Said, What's the matter? She said, "I'm nervous." I said, "Why?" I said, all the bowling around you've done, you've gone to Halifax, and you shouldn't be nervous. She said, well, I am. I said, if you're not a little nervous in something like this, there's something wrong. Because you have to be kind of, you know, to pick yourself up, be yeah, a little edgy, right. and be right there. But uh, you get over it once it. you get into the game, and uh, you're all set. That's for sure. Vanessa is 16 years old. She's been bowling for nine years. She currently bowls in five leagues. Has a current average of 108 career high single of 164 and a career high triple of 370. She qualified for this tournament with a 341. And now we're looking at our, our left-hander, Nancy Dixon. Nancy has been bowling for 20 years. She currently bowls in two leagues. Has a current average of 97 with a career high single of 156. And a career high triple of 403. So 
So everybody started off with America. This is uh, shaping up to be one of those good ones. You get the medal. <laughs> sure is. Nancy qualified for this tournament with 314. Picks up seven on her mark. Uh, she got a shot at that one. I think down the left hand in the left flat dead wood. Too far, but she's going to steal it. Too bad because she was wasn't that far away and it could have gone. She wobbled it. That's ten. The ball just starts yeah. off and just hooked yeah. right into it. She can hang hang that ball out there and pick off that left hand corner pin very easily. Doesn't seem to have any trouble with it at all. Now Rose, she had a nine and an open on a spare in her second box. Two. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of talk going on here between some of these bowlers and <laughs> the spectators. They, uh, all, all good natured. Though. Oh, it certainly is. It's it's so much fun to see this kind of banter and uh, camaraderie that we have amongst these bowlers. After punching two on his spares, has to settle with a five. But I wouldn't be surprised she come right back with a mark now. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. She's a competitor and she's a good bowler, so you know she'll put everything into it there. Time you get to interview Rose, she's <laughs> very yes and no. She uh, gets really nervous when she when you try to interview her. But you talk to her off camera, and she says how much fun she has and enjoys this bowling. Well, Marla also started off. She started off with a six and came back with a spare. would swing around a little more and she'd like to have had it, but I don't know, I get up. She kinda heard maybe a pie on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would say that yeah. a little too high. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Patsy, your sister in the background coaching. And a nine for thirty-two. Talk to talk to Patsy after her match this year, and she said that it was very, very nerve-wracking for her, and she didn't think she would come back next year. But the other girls said they're going to talk her into coming back. And I'm sure that if if they've never done something like this before, but these girls have all been in tournaments. But That's it's a different. little different. It's different. It is different. It's gonna be. You're out there all by yourself to start. That's, that's right. You have all these lights, the cameras pointing at you, and they know that we're sitting here talking about them. <laughs> you go to a tournament and you've got all 12 lanes working, so there's 12 guys or 12 ladies out there all at once. And you don't figure anybody's looking in on you. That's right. They're too busy watching everybody else. be contagious. <laughs> That's coming out of it. I don't know if I'm, if I'm just imagining this. Vanessa looks like she's throwing a little harder ball this week. I think she's thrown harder than she did last year. And that could be a part of her development, I guess. It's, uh, is she, uh, she's a lot older now. She's what, up right. 16. <laughs> <laughs> but she has good control. She's got a good in shoot there that's got good stuff on it. 
She seems to know the game. Oh, nice shot. <laughs> what a try. Wow, what a try. She doesn't have to take a lot of time to decide where she wants to play the, the shot. Uh, she sent that one right over the corner there. It could have gone just as easily as not. She normally throws an inch, but I noticed that ball at the last minute was an out shoot. That, that hooked the other way. She may throw both whenever she needs. Some people yeah. can throw both if they need it one corner or the other. They can. And that's certainly what it looked like there. There's another one of those punches. We must have had at least five of those so far. It must be, if, if she is doing that, it must be a satisfying thing to be able to have that yeah. kind of control to be able to throw in and out shoot ball. Yeah. Have to watch a little closer and see if this, that happens again in uh, in another situation. And Nancy has to take a four. So now they've all had a bad alley. Well, I guess that happens to the best of them. <laughs> just a little bit too far. And a seven. So after four, Rose, 34, Marla, 41, Vanessa, 41, and Nancy, 38. to make you wonder too with the, uh, the quickness that they're bowling if that might not be throwing some of them off a little bit. Well, it could I suppose, but I think most of them bowl that way. They seem to. They don't waste any time between balls up there. <laughs> Rose is listening to him up there and she shouldn't be. <laughs> Which is pretty hard not to hear some of them, but uh, <laughs> it sure does break the concentration. But your mind should be what you're doing up there, if you're doing all possible. Here. She's dead on it. I think she was talking to somebody just about then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 what a try. There's that three on two that uh, <laughs> that you uh, try to make at times when you have to say, say we'll go. It's three on three is really tough. You have to get an extra in the ball, but uh, a three on two will go. And that was a prime example of it, that it would go. What I did was out quite far. Uh, I don't know, I'm just maybe left. Not quite enough to the left. A good ten. 
Mine's a Marlowe's Prior Rocket 6 with a 60. This is back up here. This is 41 after 4. Well, got a break there. It certainly did. Uh, she hit it well off to the left. But a good the pin way. action. One pin in the 8 pin. The wood is not right there, but it might. Oh. Always smiling. <laughs> I don't think she ever gets upset. If she, if she does, she conceals it well. Oh. I was surprised to hear her say that in the national the junior. Uh, championship that she bowled in that she was down 40 pins. Mm. Uh, I, I had never heard the results of what she did and, uh, and that's really something. Yeah, in that caliber of bowling to come back by 40 pins and win it, it's uh, <coughs> quite an impressive thing. Nancy Dixon up. She's going to get a little bit of help there. That Deadwood took that back pin down for her. <laughs> They've had some close calls, but nobody has uh, a lot of punching. Yeah. Oh, come up the hill. Come up the hill. <laughs> Six in the first game. Rose 52, Marla 60, Vanessa 59, and Nancy 55. So it's close so far. Only eight pins between the four of them. And this is what we had expected. It was this type of uh, closeness amongst these four bowlers. you wonder, huh? <laughs> How that can happen. She's got the kind of ball you'd like to have on the right-hand side of the head pin, but uh, that was still a good, good hard, solid hit in the head pin. Just left a mess in the back row there. And she has a couple of sevens. Uh, seems to have a little bit of control problem right now, bringing that in on that head pin. She's back and forth either side of it. Marla, a couple times now, has hit that head pin really nice and, and got some bad breaks out of it. Going through the middle.
Hansel with a pretty good nine. 69 and a seven. So she's only one pin below par. smoother on their delivery that time. You get a lot of good breaks down off of that uh, three and four pin, or the three and six, two and four pin, but as we said, you don't really want to go down there. She started off with a strike. Not had anything going on. She's through the middle again. She's having, having a little trouble with that. to boost their confidence. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm getting much off of that hip pin. That's good. Boy, nice try. Excellent try. Makes you wonder how, from one week to another, th things can change. Symbol is they can change from one alley to another, or one game yeah. to another too. And, uh, Seen during games, you'd be hot as anything on one side of the uh, on one alley, cross over and onto the next alley, and can't do anything. And Nancy's got a shot here. One, two, four, eight. I think, she, I think she thought she missed the whole thing. Really. I think she did too. It kind of a surprised look on her face when she heard those pins go down. Oh. After eight, Rose, 66. Marla, 79, and opened with a fair. Vanessa, 72. Nancy, 71. We're all bunched in together there. And had anything really big going for them. No, nobody has uh, been able to try to break away yet. Still got another game to come, so. Well, I don't expect to see two games like this. No, I don't either. And a lot of punches of the line through the middle and then uh, off the. <laughs> and there's been a few bad breaks down there, that's all. So it's wide open. Settle for an 84. I don't think she'll settle for that. No. 
<laughs> She's not going to be happy about it, that's for sure. Well, Marla's open on a spare. It's a big nine. It's Marla at 88 on eight. Flat Deadwood there. Picks it up. And another spare. This might be that little boost that she's looking for. Yeah. Well, she did that once before. Started off with some eights and uh, ended up with three marks in a row. And she's doing it right now. There it is. Bonus money. Bonus money and a uh, really big boost for her score there, Bruce. I don't think she really cares about the bonus money right now. <laughs> I think the score is That's for is sure. Uh, this gives her that chance to, to pull away a little bit, build a little bit of a cushion in her points. She's 118. Oh, another ball. A couple of really nice balls there on that hit bin. Four. And 122. Well, let's put some distance between them now, unless the other two, Vanessa and Nancy, can come up with a couple of marks. It's now, now's the time for them to do it, that's for sure. Build the confidence and start the next game feeling good. Got to get on that. That's at the two pin, I think. Right there. Oh. Probably been better off to, to get on the other side of the pin rather than push spring. them across. They had to have something to go flying into the right. The nine. From her. I'm sure that wasn't where she wanted to put it. You could almost see that one as soon as he left her hand that it was going to come over there. And a nine for 90. Looking for some improvement on that score next game. Now Nancy. And if you're just tuning in, you're watching week six of the Ladies Candle Pin Challenge here at Burnton Plains, brought to you by Usher's Furniture and Appliance Store. Just wrapping up this first game of this week. There's one more game, and the, the two uh, to advance this week will go into the Skins game next week. A tricky piece of wood down there, man. Afraid of that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it had to stay out on it and push it sideways. So after the first game in week six, our second semifinal, Marla Babin had 122 to lead the way, followed by Vanessa Sonier with a 90, Nancy Dixon 86, and Rose Dowsett with an 84. So Three of them are, are lumped in six pins apart for that second spot. Uh, with Marla leading the way, you kind of expect her to stay there. So she's hoping she can maintain that cushion, and the rest of them definitely want to improve. 
Yeah, you got a good piece of wood there to slide right over on that corner pin. <laughs> well, <laughs> what happened there is he hit the dead right on the nose and the ball carried forward over to the left and then took the corner pin, but uh, it almost looked like she was going right after the pin. Another good ball in there. So she's throwing two good balls compared to what she'd been throwing in the first game. Now she's got a, she's open though. She can split those two. And there's that competitive edge that Rose has. That gets her away flying again after yeah. an 84. And uh, they come back with two good marks. As we said earlier, we're sure she wasn't happy with that. No. Marla had a good finish. And she's got a good break there, just like a single pin. Hit that pin that's closest, the one on the right. Dead ones in between them, just carry it right back. Just has to hit that front pin. It's almost impossible to believe, isn't it? <laughs> there was a, a dead one laying between those two pins. All I can say is if we had replay, I would like to see that. Yeah, she didn't hit it, there's no doubt about that. But, uh, it sure acted different. <laughs> well, I'm sure neither one of us expected that to happen. The way she hit that, we figured at least the back pin to go. <laughs> You'd have thought so, yeah. She had good luck with the shot over the, the uh, challenge round. I've seen her make a couple of them. Oh! Left the corner pin that time. I'd like to take just a minute to thank Stars Road Irving for feeding our crew here from uh, East Link Community Television. They've uh, supplied food for the crew and uh, we're very thankful for that. They, it's nice of them to do things like this. Well, Vanessa is sitting in the second place right now, but Rose is going to jump on this game. On him, so. She wants to hang in there. She's got to go with Rose. She can't let Rose get too far ahead. Oh, a nice try. impossible to get a pin over there to take that other side. Yeah, the dead ones were so flat. That, uh, uh, Nancy's got to get going. some hard picking down there too. There no between them. <laughs> There's a good view of what uh, we're talking about 12 inches between pins. You can really see it plain. With those two back pins yeah. sitting there, yeah. Makes, uh, makes you realize how much distance there is. Ball. She was breaking that ball right in on the head pin. <coughs> oh, excuse me. She's not doing that right now. Oh, she's just off a little bit on either side. She can't seem to, to home in on that king pin. <coughs> there she goes. Hey, got to start doing that on the first ball. 
So Rose has started off with 28 and opened on the second with a spare. Uh, Marla has a couple of 10s for 20. Vanessa a couple of 9s for 18. And Nancy a 9 and an 8 for 17. She deserved eight, as far as I deserve, because that was a pretty good hit. She had a mess there for a while, now she's got a good shot. Picks up eight more on her spare. Above par for this this game so far. Fifty-four. Well, Marla started off with a couple of tens after having 122 her first match. Well, she made a three and two a little while ago. The other side. Good pinning. Three tens in a row. And she ended the last game with three marks, so the last six frames have been uh, she hasn't dropped a pin. No. And that pays off in the long run. Unless you leave on the plate. on the outside of that shot, pushed everything right. And Vanessa, a couple of nines. She needs that pin, needs that pin. Sure did. She deserves a break. She didn't hit that ball in there and leave any extra pin. And now she's got her shot. Although she's had trouble the last couple of times with that pin for tens. She's been dropping it in the gutter. And I think that uh, that was working on her, and she, she overcompensated. She wasn't going to drop that one in the gutter. It's easy to get discouraged when things going that way for you out there. She can go way down to the left there, or stay away from that on this point of there, anything there, right on the red, anywhere around there is good. <laughs> that ball breaking back towards that pin. Uh, yes, it did. <laughs> it could have been a robber. In fact, I think she brushed it going by. She did. She did touch it. A little bit higher, it could have robbed her of that. Well, it's an One, two, seven, ten. Man, she's struggling this week. She's only had 
needs one mark. Mm -hmm. She's not getting in on that head fin at all. There it is. I'm going to break a little bit more if you didn't. Didn't break enough. Well, with that dead wood in back there by those other two pins, at the seven and eight, she uh, she can get on that head pin. She certainly would have stood a chance to clean them up. And another, so that's the four. Second game. Rose Dose at 54. Marla Babbin at 30 and open with a spare. Vanessa, 37, and open with a spare. Or I should say Marla, 40, and open with a spare. Vanessa, 37, and Nancy, 32. Good second ball. Cleaning up some of those that were left there. Pin, all right, just a little solid. Yeah. <laughs> and eight for 71. Marla's got three tens and a spare. She's working on that spare right now. How close that was to being a strike, the pin still waking down there. Right on it. Yeah. Right on it. Yeah. And that gives her two in a row. She had bonus money in the first game, or is she going to go after some this game, too? See this bear made quite a while. No, it's, and but we've seen a lot of breaks like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the ladies' candle pin challenge here at Brunswick Lanes, brought to you by Usher's Furniture. Good pin. A lot of action, a lot of pin action down there. Vanessa's got a spare open here. Vanessa back on that head pin. Just in the pocket that time. Picks up a good nine for 46 on four. Showed a little more confidence on that corner than she did the right corner. Certainly did. She uh, threw a hook on at that time too, uh, where she was throwing in shoots on the other corner. That's what I was talking about a while back there, that she does seem to throw an in shoot or a, or a hook, whichever she needs. Whichever she needs, yeah. Now she's got a shot here. She's got the one, the three, and the six, and the seven pin with a flat deadwood covering it. <laughs> Didn't drop back, but she still took a nine. And we got three seventy ones up there, Bruce. Yes, we have. <laughs> Yep. 
Uh, Nancy. Those couple marks had brought Vanessa back. Uh, Rose had closed in real close on that second spot from Vanessa. Yeah, they're only still only six pins apart. And uh, We're gonna be here. actually, after four, Rose was ahead. trailing by one. That's the first good head pin hit she had and didn't leave her very much. left to play at the end of six. Rose Dose at 71, Marla Babin 71, Vanessa Sonier 71, and Nancy Dixon 50. The battle right now is Rose and Vanessa for that second spot. And they've both been throwing it a lot better first ball, getting some breaks up there that they can shoot at. And we're coming down with only four frames left. Back from that 84, she's showing a lot better, throwing a lot better ball over there. Too. Back up there, throwing with a little confidence now, as to what she was earlier. the deadwood and everything. The deadwood looked like it was frozen up against yeah. the pin. They bounced right over there. So Rose is 95 on eight. So that means Vanessa's gotta have a spare to stay with her or America sometime. ball again now. She's yeah. punching there for a while, but uh, <coughs> she really made the adjustment or things are just breaking. Ball's breaking a little different for her. Got a wide open shot there. Prepare this game along with her 22. 202 total right now after 17 frames. Right back on that head pin again. Yeah, get down there on the left. See if the ball will come off and hit that uh, pin, maybe fl slide it over to the right. Pushed it a little bit. <laughs> it pushed it, but not hard enough. Got it wobbling. She's right on a, a very good shot. Oh, a 10 for 90. Now well, it's up to Vanessa. Kind of look the rose to see what uh, she's going to have a mark to stay with her. Oh, through the middle again. She's had a few of those. <laughs> Sometimes you tend to try too hard uh, to get on that head pin, and that's what you could do. You can go through the middle. And it's so easy not to put that little extra in it that you really don't need.
Pretty ball. And she has 87. So uh, she was leading by six after the first game. She's trailing Rose by three. Eight. So it's two things different, right? This is Nancy Dixon. Hasn't had a mark this game yet. In fact, she had a mark her first tally of the first game and hasn't had one since. There is two pins difference between Rose and Vanessa right now. Rose is leading her by two pins. to be glad when it's over. Yeah. <laughs> having a tough time up there. Yeah. <clears throat> so after eight of the second game, Rose, 95, Marla, 90, Vanessa, 87, and Nancy, 68. So right now, the battle is for that second spot between Rose and Vanessa. And I'm sure both of them have looked up at the telescope and know exactly where they stand. And as I said earlier, I believe it's a two-pin difference right now. Yes, it is, yeah. It rose up by two pins. She made up the six as she was down and picked up two more. Good pin. Real good pin. And that's the, that's the kind of pinion that you have to do to stay there. That's where this extra pin is going to show. So she's now 105 on nine. That's a good spot to hit it on the outside there. You're in the pocket. You're only missing the two pins with your punch. So that could be a big, big spare. Picks up four. 119. 203. And that really puts the pressure on Vanessa now. She definitely needs a mark and she needs 35 pins to tie. There's two boxes. We'll watch Marla here. I'll finish out her her match. Uh, no doubt Marla's going to be in the in the skins. Just a little thin. Twenty-one now, so I don't think anybody's going to catch her. <laughs> no, she stamped her name on the on the first game there. After the last three, the eighth, ninth, and tenth boxes of the first game. She didn't spare, spare strike. Real good double for 
from Maryland. She went 2.11 in her first one several weeks ago. And I can improve on that. Vanessa just having so much trouble here getting, getting on track. One of those matches where a little bit of everything goes wrong. You're off your, off your game just a bit. You can't hit what you want. You hit one and it doesn't go. Then you do that. You pick up a pin here and a pin there. And uh, it just makes for a tough day. But the longer you bowl, the more of these you run into, the more of the good days you run into also. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she realizes it is done. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Short pin is right. <laughs> there we have Hawk again that she played. Vanessa ends up at 102 and a two game total of 192. So it just leaves Nancy to bowl her two game. The alley's off. We're going to get ready for next week. Well, we've pretty well determined now. Uh, Nancy, I don't think there's any way she can come up with it. Unless she struck out, and I still don't think that's going to give her enough. So. No, I don't think so. I think we've got our two now in uh, Rose and Marla. So that determines our four uh, players for the Skins game. Nancy is, uh, Nancy's had a good tournament uh, until just, she started off great in this first, in the first game and then just hasn't been able to get on track well, ever since. She hasn't had a mark, she really hasn't had a spare shot in no. that since the first alley of the first game. No. Uh, her ball's not working for her right now and uh, just one of those things. That's where that little thing we call luck comes in in, in candle pin bowling. It's, uh, so, after week six, the second semifinal, we've determined our two, uh, two other bowlers to go along with Mary Jo and Denise. They will be Marla Babin with a 231, Rose Dowsett with a 203. Uh, next in line was Vanessa Sonier with a 192, and Nancy Dixon had a 168. So next week, uh, hey, we're looking at uh, four pretty good bowlers, we and uh, Mary, we got a lot of money on the line. We had Mary Jo, Denise, Marla, and Rose, right so uh, it should be another good match. Uh, these are all good, good bowlers. They like pressure. They bowl well under pressure, so... Um, we're going to get up, get a, some money here gathered up, and so that we can have a little talk with the two that's going to advance into the into next week in the skins game. So stay with us. We'll be back shortly to talk to the two winners of today's match. Usher's Furniture and Appliances, Main Street in downtown Yarmouth, proud supporters of Candlepin Challenge on East Link Community Television. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the wrap-up of the sixth and final game of the semifinals. So uh, we have a couple winners here with us, Bruce, and uh, they did a fine job. Rose, congratulations. <laughs> Is it getting any easier? A little. <laughs> the, bowl the bowling's doing well. We're still having trouble to get her to talk here, Bruce. The girl, I think, uh, it's it's not characteristic of this lady. When we get off camera, she'll talk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you told me you had somebody you wanted to say hi to. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Rose, here's some money for advancing. Congratulations, and we look forward to seeing you in the Skins game. <laughs> Marla, Hi. Uh, congratulations. You've, you. you've had some really good games, and uh, we're really proud of the way you're bowling. Thank you. 
Are you all prepared for the next one? Uh, I, as long as I made it in, I'm happy with that. <laughs> and and no no six gutter balls either. No, one will have to do. <laughs> well, no, not the time to roll gutter balls. <laughs> no, no, not the time. On behalf of ushers, we want to congratulate you. you. We wish you the best of luck in the skins game, and thank we you. look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Good luck. Thank you, Bruce. Another. Another good round of bowling, and uh, I think we got a great one shaped up for the Skins game. We're looking pretty good here. I've got the four names right here and, and the order that they're going to bowl in. Mary Jo Dowsett's going to lead off, followed by Denise Woodrow, and then Marla Babin, and Rose Dowsett will be the fourth bowler. That's the tough position <laughs> to be in. She doesn't know that yet, I don't think, but uh, that's where she's going to be. The money, we've got that lined up. There's a total of $785 on the line for this uh, next three games. In game one, they divided it up. The first five frames will be worth $15 each. The second five frames of the first game will be worth $20 each. Then it goes to game two, and each frame is worth $25. And game three, each frame is worth $35. So there's, there's $785 out there waiting to be won. Somebody's going to go home with a nice little bit of change. So, we hope so. And, uh, so on behalf of our sponsor, Usher's Furniture, we want to thank you for watching. We hope you're enjoying this. Uh, tune in again next week at the same time.